and welcome to this video. My name is Chris, I'm an Australian GP. In today's quick video, I'm going to be talking about a very common condition, so common that I've even had it myself, something known as glandular fever. So if you're interested, please keep watching. Glandular fever has many names. It's known as infectious mononucleosis, the Epstein-Barr virus, or colloquially as kissing disease. So it's a virus, like so many that we've talked about before. So it's an incredibly infectious disease, most commonly seen in teenagers and young adults, and it's often caught by swapping saliva, hence why it's given the name the kissing disease. You can get EBV from other sources as well, so sharing cups and cutlery and things like that. So basically anything that shares saliva. It's not just kissing, but that's a very common way people can get it. So if you have glandular fever, what can you expect? Some people have nothing, especially if they catch them when they're quite young. Um, it tends to be the older teenagers, younger adults, in, at least in my experience, that have the uh, worst symptoms. And that can be fever, an extremely sore throat, quite swollen lymph glands, fatigue, malaise, which is that general feeling of ugh in the body, not just the tiredness. And you can also get an enlargement in the liver and the spleen, which in itself is not a symptom, but it can cause some abdominal discomfort, so some tummy pains. So we often don't require any testing to diagnose it because the symptoms and these signs are usually pretty universal. Most people feel very tired, have a sore throat, a fever. They don't necessarily have pus on their tonsils if they have tonsils still, but they do have a really red throat, sore lymph nodes, sometimes a little bit of, you know, we can feel their belly that there's a bit of enlargement in the spleen or the liver. So quite often we can make the assumption that it is but if we wanted to clarify for diagnostic purposes that you do have Epstein-Barr virus or EBV, mono, you name it, then a blood test is done. So if we were to do a full blood count, we expect to see a high white cell count because your body's fighting off a virus. If we were to do liver functions, sometimes we would see that this is inflamed. If we were to do a marker of inflammation, we would expect that you would have a higher level of inflammation there. Um, but the most important test is the EBV, Epstein-Barr virus, glandular fever, whatever you want to call it, serology. There is also a test called the monospot test, mono, mononucleosis, I suppose. Um, and that can also tell us whether or not you've got EBV or not. So let's say that you do have it. What do you do about it? Good thing is, like most infections that are viral in nature, your body fights it and there is no cure, there is no treatment you will get through it and you will get over it. There are things you can do to support yourself, of course, so if you can tolerate them, um, simple analgesics, paracetamol, ibuprofen to get your fever down, make it less uncomfortable to swallow, reduce any belly pains, really, really important. Rest is super important, um, is the fatigue can continue for weeks, if not months afterwards, and it can be really debilitating. I had glandular fever when I was in year 12, um, and I ended up taking, I think it was a week or two off school at the very beginning, but for weeks I was struggling to get through the day. It's like the fatigue is like nothing of it I had ever experienced by then. Um, and so they got back to normal and that was great, but <laughs> you really have to be kind and considerate to yourself. We advise, not that it's treatment, um, that people with glandular fever don't do contact sports and and if you're tired and you're sore, then you probably don't want to, but the, the, there is a very small risk that you may injure your spleen particularly because it's slightly bigger and slightly more prone to being injured um, during activities like contact sports. Um, so you may be told to rest and not do any exercise or any of those types of sports. Keeping up your fluids is really important. Um, and just be aware that antibiotics don't help. In fact, antibiotics like penicillins with glandular fever can actually give you um, a rash which then makes it look like that you've either got a penicillin allergy or like something else is going on. Um, so it's important that we get the diagnosis right and that you aren't treated with antibiotics because it's going to do nothing for you. I mean it'll strip your gut of some good bacteria and maybe give you diarrhea which you may already have anyway. Um, but yeah there's no benefit in that at all. <laughs> so when can you go back to doing your daily activities? Kind of depends on you really. Um, 
most of the time a week is more than enough for the majority of the acute symptoms so the fever the sore throat etc to pass but it's case by case and everyone is different um as for return to sport and whatnot it really is when you feel like you're ready to return to sport uh, usually two weeks later sometimes six depends on what kind of sport and how tired you are basically you don't want to rush into anything because your body is recovering it's a pretty gnarly virus to get and unfortunately it's very 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 common so the majority of people will have it by the time time they're adults anyway this was just a quick touch on what Epstein-Barr virus is why it's got so many gosh darn names what to expect and um, yeah just a little bit of education to sprinkle in all my other rants and things if you have any questions let me know if you have any suggestions for videos let me know but until next time stay safe stay healthy and I'll see you in a video soon Bye.